people. And you are special people. Herb, please come have a seat. Thank you. Uh, what we want to talk about is public art and, and advancing diverse perspectives. And I, I laugh because I look at the room and I see the diversity of perspectives in the room and it's exactly what we had in mind. We want to talk about what's happening in our communities. We have, want to have some new thoughts, new ideas. But the most important thing we want to do is to make sure that if you want to be helpful to our goals and objectives this evening, you understand that you do that by making sure that you walk out this door knowing at least one person you did not know when you came in. That's the diversity and the diverse perspectives and oftentimes what we do is we start moving towards the persons who look most like us. I mean by that in their attire or whatever it is. I just encourage you to do the opposite. Okay? Uh, because that's what our diverse perspectives will be. Uh, my name is Lloyd Williams. I'm honored to serve as president and CEO of the Greater Harlem Chamber of Commerce is um, a tradition and many of you are familiar with it. We ask that you just be kind enough to stand up and give us your name, your title, and affiliation. We would prefer that it's not a commercial. <laughs> we would just like your name, title, and affiliation because there's someone in this audience who's going to look at you and so I need to speak to her before we leave. Hopefully not just because she's beautiful, but that you speak to her and introduce yourself. And also, of course, um, they'll make a note and they'll figure out how to contact you. But there's at least two or three persons in this room that you need to know. And uh, I intend to uh, do the same. So let me talk about start. public art, and I've been involved with several public art projects here in Harlem. Uh, first, as a private citizen, I was on the committee to build the Ralph Ellison Memorial that's at 150th and Riverside Drive by where Mr. Ellison lives. And from that experience, I really felt to engage with the city in the whole process of what makes public art. Public art is in space that doesn't belong to one individual, but belongs to the broader public. And there's a whole rigor to getting into that uh, system. And so on that project, along, we worked along with the Parks Department, but also the second project I was involved in was the um, Harriet Tubman project at uh, 122nd and uh, Frederick Douglass Boulevard, the competition and coordination project. And then recently with uh, Al on the Frederick Douglass Circle project. And one of the things in, in that effort, and Al and other artists in Harlem, one, the city, when they have projects, of cultural affairs, the New York City Transit, they have a file of artists that they go to. And at all these sorts of meetings, I really encourage artists to go down and make sure they're in that file. Because anytime someone goes to that file, they're going to do a project. <laughs> they're not just flipping through for, you know, it's, they have a school, it could be a you know, public project, uh, percent for art project. So I really encourage you, if you're not in those files, to really make yourself available. Particularly artists who aren't represented facial artists, say you're an abstract artist or, or whatever, so that means you're in the mix for a thousand different things. It's not just for an African American identified kind of project, but for a project that's just looking for a uh, sort of specific kind of more um, played down kind of uh, imagery, a neutral kind of imagery. So I really encourage you to do that. And in working with Al, we really tried to pull together a broader com community dialogue. We actually met in this room when we had the final artist uh, selection. Uh, the vetting process, if it does, uh, is done right, really reaches out to the African American community. We can do it through zip codes in these files. We can do it through knowing artists. If we know there's good artists, really encouraging to, uh, to participate. So there is a process. And so a lot of times when the artists want to be out there and they feel frustrated, they see a piece of art in the park or somewhere else and say, well, why can't I put my art there? But there's insurance, 
There's liabilities. There's a lot of other aspects to, uh, to that that people don't know. And so in the Frederick Douglass Circle project, if you think about the Duke Ellington project, one circle on the, on the east side, when we started out, uh, Frederick Douglass was an intersection with segments. And so there was a whole reaching out to the federal government to get funding. We did an application for a grant for federal funding that actually goes back to the Clinton administration. So that's how long these projects take also. It's not a short term. I was very fortunate to be working with organizations that had larger funding of own for this project. I was then working for the Central Park Conservancy. So the time that it takes if you're a non for profit or an individual, sometimes it's a long, hard road to get some, get these public projects reviewed and uh, signed off on. And right now I'm about to be on the uh, review commi uh, committee with New York City Transit for um, the Mother Hale uh, facility for the uh, bus stop problem. So in working with Al and the focus on the Frederick Douglass project, we looked at the project not just as a statue in a circle, but as a circle would be a dialogue that worked with the art and the sculpture and, and the site as well. And so in the competition, I worked on the competition side along with the Studio Museum in the vetting of the artists and the public presentation. And when we shortlisted the number of artists, I think we had four or five uh, artists we narrowed down, they all got a little money to do a, a specific site-specific presentation which we brought to the, uh, to the board. So Al was the selected candidate. And he's a, he's a son of Harlem. He actually grew up on 110th Street. His mother, Betty Jean Miller, you might, uh, might know Betty Jean from community uh, activism and all that. So it helped to have talent. It helped to be of the neighborhood. But it also helped to have a partnership that really looked in, in totality with all the issues that it takes to move a project forward. We had to do a lot of work with engineers, with agencies, with the broader uh, public. So with that, I'll introduce you to Al, who's going to give like a, a broader overview of the art aspect of the uh, project and its history. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. I'm trying to keep it short in the interest of time. Um, as John mentioned, this uh, project started as a result uh, of a competition that Gabrielle Corin and I, who is the sculptor, I being the site artist, and that means that I uh, design the landscape and the elements on the site and that includes everything from uh, the wagon wheel fence that you'll see, uh, the uh, inspired uh, ground plane which is inspired by 19th century quilts, um, the fountain, the fiber optically lighted uh, constellation wall and fountain and uh, bollards, manhole covers, etc., etc. And I would be remiss if I didn't. Uh, with Gabrielle, who happens to be in the audience, who did the wonderful sculptor, sculpture of Frederick Douglass, is right here. So, Gabrielle, please stand up. And thank you. Also, I suggest that you check out the uh, Gabrielle's website. Uh, she's got marvelous, marvelous. Uh, she's got a great. Uh, uh, sculpture of Marcus Garvey that we're all very much in love with and should be in Marcus Garvey Park. Um, and of course Malcolm X and one of my good friends, deceased friends, uh, Vincent Smith's fabulous uh, work. Um, so I, I think without further ado, we'll uh, dim the light.
I warmly congratulate you upon the very favorable circumstances in which we meet today. My dream has always been, still is, and shall forever be, freedom! Thank you. 